Okay, good morning, guys. Um, I am going to start by going through the homework from Wednesday. So, we need to make sure we're writing down our reasons. Uh, you seem to be doing okay with the questions, able to calculate the values, but like I said the other day, you won't get full marks unless you give your reasons for arriving. Yep. At an answer. Okay. So we'll start here with part C. Okay. Um, now, hopefully I've gotten across to you at this stage that there's so many ways to do this. So if yours is different, that is very, very possible. Um, if you're 100% sure you're right, great. If you're not, if you're like a little bit like, mm, have I done this right? Just ask, okay? So I found an X there, which means this one and this one are vertically opposite. So B is equal to 41 degrees and I know that because they are vertically opposite. Okay, I found an X. Yeah. Right. Um, so I'm just going to take that out and I'm going to put in 41. Okay, so I'm going to go with this next. I can see a Z. So if I go that way, then that way, then that way, that means this angle here. And oh, that's not going to help me yet. Anyway, so these two angles. Sorry. These two angles are the same, which isn't helping me because I don't know D. Should have gone the other side. But anyway, I can do this, okay? If I go, I just don't want to get rid of that yet. So see where I'm going here? So you have a triangle there. And we know from one of the theorems that the three angles of a triangle add up to 180. So I have. 41 plus 73 plus D equals 180. And the theorem is the three angles of a triangle. So if I do, take that off. Um, if I do 180 minus 41 minus 73, I get 66 degrees for D, yeah, so that's 66 there, and based on my alternate angle I found a minute ago, that's 66, right, and then, oh, what color will I do it in, let's go yellow again, see here, So I have an X there, and that X means that this 66 here and C are the same because they're vertically opposite. So I have C equals 66 degrees, and I actually had two reasons for that. So the first one was my alternate angle that I found. And that's the green Z that's there. And then I had a vertically opposite angle and that's the X. Yeah. So 
So now this is 66. Okay, um, this here, I don't want to get too messy, but actually I might take it off. Okay, hang on. That's pretty good. Okay, so this here is a straight line, which means these three angles are sitting on a straight line, so they have to add up to 180. So I know that A plus 41 plus 66 have to add up to 180. And I know that because they are on a straight line. So then to get A, I'm going to do 180 minus 41 minus 66. So I get A equals 73 degrees. Yeah. And then the last one down there is E. Go red. That there is a straight line, which means these two angles here on the straight line have to add up to 180. So E plus 66 have to equal 180. Why? Because they're on a straight line together. So then E equals 180 minus 66. Sorry, I'm just going to try and get there a little. Ah, there you go. So 180 minus 66 is 114 degrees. Okay, so let's see. We have A was 73. B, we got first at the top, 41. C, 66. D was also 66, and then E was 140. Yeah? Okay, for the next one. Okay. It's the same deal. Find everything. Um, okay. So I can see a Z here. Where did I find it? So there on the line, down the transversal, and back on the parallel line. There's a Z. So this angle and this angle are alternates and that means they're equal. Okay, so I can say that D D equals 63 degrees. How do I know? Because they're alternate angles. Okay. Oh look. I have a X there, which means those two are vertically opposite. So I have A is 63, and I know that because they are vertically opposites. Okay, so let me take this off now. So this is 63 and this is 63 and um, oh there's another one there's another x there which means they're equal because they're alternate so b is 102 
because it's alternate. That means B is 102. Um, I think there's a Z there. So if I go parallel line down the transversal, parallel line, and then you have this one and this one are the same. So C is 102. Did I give the wrong reason on the last one? I think I did. Okay, so that is an alternate Z, definitely. It's still on the page, but the B one was an alternate. It was an X, so that was vertically opposite. Okay, to get that, like this one here, Get B equal to 102, that was an X. So sorry, you know, I wrote it. I don't even know if I said the right thing, but I definitely wrote down the wrong thing. Okay, we'll take that off, and then we know that this is 102. Um trying to think if there's an easy way to get this, I don't think there is. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is We have triangle there. Yeah? So if I can figure out what, see where the dot is? If I can figure out what that angle is, then I'll be able to get what E is. And if you look at the dot, the dot is on a straight line with 102. See that? So if I do 180 minus 102, I get 78. So that means where I had the dot there, that angle is 78. And then the three angles there make up 180. So, sorry, this was a straight line. That's why I did that. And then E plus 63 plus 78 have to equal 180 because they are the three angles in a triangle. So then E is 180 minus 63 minus 78. And that is 39. Oh, sorry. The sink fell behind a bit there. Yeah, so I just did the subtraction then 180 minus the 63 minus the 78. 39. Okay. Um, and the last one, sorry, because it's right. All right, we have no parallel lines here, so okay, this one was trickier. Uh, anyway, do you remember that these two lines means that those two sides of that triangle are equal, which means it's an isosceles triangle. And if the sides are equal, then so are the angles. Okay, so these two angles, this angle here with the dot and A are the same. Okay, whatever that dot angle is, uh, that's equal to A. Okay, and 50 degrees plus the dot plus A have to equal 180 because they're the three angles in a triangle. Do you know what I mean? Okay, so 180 minus 50 is 130. 
okay? That 130 is split between this angle here and this angle here. Yeah, so 50 is up here, that's used up. There's 180 in total. So if I do 180 minus 50, that means there's 130 degrees left. And it's going to be split between those two angles. Now, because it's isosceles, we know that those two angles are equal. So it's split equally between those two angles, which means all we have to do is divide by 2. So 130 divided by 2 gives us 65 degrees, and that's what A is. Yeah? So I'm just going to remove all this, and this is 65, and this one is 65. Yeah? Okay, next I have a straight line here. which means all the angles sitting on the straight line there must equal 180. So B plus 65 plus 46 equals 180. How do I know? I know because they are, oh, I never put my reason in a minute. So I know that because we're on a straight line. I'm just looking up here at the reason I divided by two there was because I had an isosceles triangle. Forgot to put that in. Um, okay, so B is 180 minus 65 minus 46. So I get 69 degrees for B. Yeah? Okay, and now if we look at the triangle that's kind of tilted, it's also isosceles. So this angle, or sorry, that line and that line are the same. And if those lines are the same, then the angles opposite are also the same. So that means C must also be equal to 69 because they are the matching angles in an isosceles triangle. Okay, so there you go, that's the homework. Okay, so let me know if there's any um, issues with that, please, anything you don't quite understand. Oh, that's not how you spell Friday. Friday, 26. Um, right. No, here we are, parallelograms. Yes, okay. So we're starting with parallelograms. Um, so a parallelogram is a quadrilateral for which both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. And so quadrilateral. So I'm trying to catch up on this on my iPad, hang on. Yeah, so a quadrilateral is a four-sided shape. So if you have a four-sided shape where the opposite sides are parallel, then you have a parallelogram. Okay, and um, there are different types of parallelograms, each with their own properties. Okay, so I'm going to go through these and... Um, this is quite important, I, you definitely need to know, and most of this you'll know already, but you definitely, definitely need to know this, okay? So a parallelogram is, um, not its technical name, but a tilted rectangle. Okay, that's essentially what it is. You have opposite sides are equal, opposite sides are parallel, like in a rectangle. I said, if it wasn't tilted, 
um, the top and bottom of a rectangle are equal in length and the left and right are equal in length. It's the same for a parallelogram. The opposite sides are parallel. Um, opposite angles are equal. That's actually a theorem. So let's say we're going to do that down below there. The opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal in measure. So you can see there the, the dot is equal to the dot because they're opposite each other and the x is equal to the x because they're also opposite each other. Um, so yeah, opposite angles in a parallelogram are equal. Sorry, this thing is really slow at the moment. Um, and then diagonals bisect each other. This is another theorem. And so bisect, what does bisect mean? Bisect means that it cuts in half. And um, pretty sure we came across this when we were doing the congruency at the earlier in this chapter when I was saying like oh you need an awful lot of information to do this and um, I'm pretty sure we talked about diagonals bisecting each other but basically when you draw the diagonals in a parallelogram the diagonal that goes from top left to bottom right so say this diagonal here yeah cuts the other one in half So both those yellow lines are the same length. And then it works the other way. So if I were to draw the yellow line in first, it would put the blue line into two. Yeah? Um, a rhombus then. Rhombus is a tilted square. So it will, I suppose, share some properties with the parallelogram because it is also tilted, but it will share properties with a square because it is a square. Okay, so it has four equal sides, just like a square. Um, opposite sides are parallel, so that's the case for all of these. All parallelograms have opposite sides parallel. Um, opposite angles are equal, so the same as for the parallelogram, opposite angles are equal. Now, this is an important little square that I've definitely got stuck on a few times. There's an awful lot of information in this little square here. Um, I don't know, you kind of just forget about a lot of it. Uh, sorry, I am putting a square around that last box there. So diagonals bisect each other and the angle for an angle of 90 degrees is formed, okay? So, couple of things. The diagonals bisect each other the same way they do up above. Okay, so we're okay with that. If you draw one diagonal, it cuts through the diagonal in half. And if you draw a second diagonal, it cuts the first diagonal in half. That's fine. Okay, so that's the same. Now, what isn't the same is in the center here. When it's a rhombus, you form four 90 degree angles. when you draw in the diagonals. Okay, so when you draw in those diagonals, you're forming four 90 degree angles in the center. So um, that does not happen with the parallelogram and that's important, okay? And the other thing which they're addressing here with the um, color coded dots, that when you draw the diagonal in a rhombus, the diagonal bisects the angle. Sorry, just gonna have to wait again. Thank you. 
Oh god, right, we might just have to shut it down. Back in. I can't even do that. Oh my god, it's so annoying. And um, right. Oh my god, what am I gonna do? Sorry guys. I literally can't do anything about this. Um Right, so the importance of that little box that I've put pink around and um, just really, 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 there's a lot of information in there and it's one of those bits that when you're trying to solve a problem and you just can't go through it, I suppose I need you to keep in your head that a rhombus, does, when you draw diagonals in a rhombus, you create those 90 degree angles in the center and you create the um, equal angles in the corners as well because when the diagonals go into the corners, they actually cut the angle directly in half which doesn't happen in the parallelogram. They're not cut in half or bisected. Okay, so we only have to wait for two more words. Seven more letters. Uh, right, the second two quadrilaterals that we're going to do, you are much more familiar with, I think. Um, it's a rectangle and a square. Yay! Okay, so the rectangle, you know what a rectangle is. The opposite sides are equal, opposite sides parallel. Um, when it's not tilted, all the angles are going to equal 90 degrees. So all the corners there are 90 degrees. And same again, the diagonals bisect each other. And then for the square, it's the same deal. So all four sides are equal, opposite sides are parallel, all the angles are 90, the diagonals bisect each other. We are again forming our 90 degree angles in the center. And again, don't know why it isn't here, but the diagonal bisects the angles in the corner. Okay, so uh, most of those you would know, um, there's a bit of information perhaps in the rhombus there that you might need to learn. So I said some of these were theorems, so theorem number, now where are we? Six, so this is going to be seven. So theorem number seven, in a parallelogram opposite sides are equal... Sorry, opposite sides are equal and opposite angles are equal. Okay, so we talked about that up above. Um, theorem 8, we also talked about up above. The diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So if over here I draw in this diagonal, then it will cut this one into two halves, or vice versa. Um, we talked about corollaries. Uh, I went to the definitions and we talked about corollaries being like follow-ons from theorems. So here's an example of a corollary. It's probably the first one we've done. Um, a diagonal, so, I suppose based on the fact that diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other, we know that a diagonal divide, divides a parallelogram into two congruent triangles. Okay, so that is a follow-on from the fact that the diagonals bisect each other. If you look at the congruency, I'm not going to go through it in any detail because um, we will be coming back to congruency, but a follow-on from that is that 
basically, if you draw the diagonal like this in a parallelogram, yep, then the triangle above ABC is congruent. Remember, congruent means exactly the same. So three same sides, three same angles. Yeah. Um, right, so that's it. Okay, so your facts about parallelograms and you, the theorems that follow on from that are I didn't give you new information, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so up here I said that these were theorems and down here I just pointed out the theorems. Okay, so that's not new. Um, and a diagonal divides parallelograms to identical triangles. Um, it's just a follow-on or a corollary from the previous theorem. Right, so let's see if we've any anything good on this. I don't know, maybe let's just do six. I think there might be something in six. So let's do that one. And where is it? Uh, do you know what? And we'll do 7a. Okay, so we'll do 6 and we'll do 7a for homework. Um, I'll just put it into your homework. So you don't need to do 7b, just 6 and 7a. And good fun what we'll know today. There you go. Okay, so those two questions, all of question six and then just question seven A for Monday. And let me know if you come across any issues. Okay. Thanks guys, have a good weekend.